This video will show you how to use the UDV 2D 3D simulation software. As the simulation software is included in UDOP, let's start UDOP. As the UDV 2D 3D simulation software use parameters coming from channel 10, we highly recommend you to select the default parameters. Then we can go into the UDV 2D 3D simulation software. This panel recalls you that the assisted mode is not available in UDV 2D 3D mode. The simulation software is divided into two main areas, the graphical information area and the control panel. When the software is not running any simulation, the graphical information area displays geometrical informations such as the ultrasonic beam axis of the receivers which are displayed in red, the borders of the damping volumes which are displayed in blue. The measured depth is always measured along the axis of the ultrasonic beam of the emitter. Its origin is the beginning of the emitting transducer. The velocity field and depth range are defined into the velocity and depth panel, so let's go in that panel. All the simulation are based on movement of particles which are randomly placed inside the measuring range. The measuring range is defined by two buttons, from which define the beginning of the measuring depth and end which define the end. The velocity field is defined by a source of particles which can be placed anywhere into the white Z plane. Its position is entered in these two button. The intensity of the velocity is defined for two particular directions. The first one point the starting depths and the second one point the end of the measuring depths. The velocity value is entered in these two button. In 2D mode, the rotation mode is also available. In such a case, all the particles rotate around a center point. The position of the center point is entered like the position of the source of particle and the rotation speed is defined in this button. But for the moment, let's keep the source of particles. Now let's have a look on the simulation parameters. In this panel, you can choose between the 2D mode or the 3D mode. Also, two parameters are specific to the simulation. The display scale factor allows to extend the velocity scales in order to improve the visualization and the particle density allows to define the amount of particles used for simulation. The number of simulated particles should be selected in order to have about a thousand, few thousand particles. All other parameters are common UDV parameters. Let's have a look now on how the geometry of the probe is defined. For a 2D simulation, you see here the ultrasonic beam axis of the emitter and the ultrasonic beam axis of both receivers. Please note that all beam axes must cross at the same point. You can enter here the value of the angle between the ultrasonic beam axis of the emitting probe and the ultrasonic beam axis of the receivers. This angle must be the same for all receivers. You will enter now in this button the distance between the emitting probe and the receiving probe. This distance must also be the same for all receivers. What can be fixed independently is the position of the receiving probe along its ultrasonic beam axis. For transducer 1 you put the value here and for transducer 2 you enter the value here. The emitting probe and the receiving probe can be selected from a list of available transducer. For receiver let's select the 4 MHz 5 mm and for the emitting probe a, a transducer 4 MHz 8 mm. For all probes, the operating frequency must be the same. Let's keep these values. Before doing our first simulation, let's have a look on how the particle flows. 
a click on that button show the flowing particles. Every reset we start a new visualization. We are now ready to perform our first simulation. The first measuring results are the Doppler frequencies issue from both receivers. The measured results are displayed in red and must be compared to the theoretical values which are displayed in blue. We can see a good agreement between these two values. So let's have a look on the velocity profiles. Again we can see a good agreement between the measured values and the theoretical values. Let's see the influence of an increase in the measuring range. Let's go in the velocity and depth range panel and change the maximum depth to 200 millimeters. You will notice that the maximum velocity change also a little bit. And let's have a look on the result of the simulation. As you may realize, the velocities are not correctly measured at higher depths. The real reason comes from the position of the probe. Let's have a look on that. As you may realize, the beam cross at a distance too close from the origin. We have to move that point. Also, the beam width is too big at higher depths. Let's move the probe a little bit. And we can change the distance or change the angle. Let's change the angle to 10 degrees. As you may realize now, the beam cross at a much better position. Let's have a look now on the result of this change. Now, the velocity are correctly measured at higher depths, but at lower depths we have a small region where the measured values are not correct. Let's change again the position of the probe and reduce the distance between the probe to 17 millimeters. Now the Doppler frequencies are correctly measured and we can have a look on the velocity profile. Again, we have a close match, match between the measured value and the theoretical values. Again, let's change the velocity field by moving the source of particles at the starting depths and moving it closer to the beam axis of the emitting probe. This will increase the VZ velocity. In order to perform a faster simulation, we will also reduce the number of particles. Let's reduce it in order to have a few thousand of simulated particles. And then have a look on the simulation results. We clearly seen that the Doppler frequencies are aliased. Let's remove the aliasing by moving the origin of the Doppler frequency scale on both profile. Then we can have a look on the velocity profile. Let's apply a filter. As you may realize, the VY component is not correctly measured at higher depths. The reason comes from the fact that the simulating software assumes that all the particles belonging to a single damping volume must have the same velocity. If you have a closer look on the flowing particles, you will realize that the particles flowing in this region do not have the same velocities that in that region. The way to improve this is to reduce the size of the damping volume. The way to do this is to change the emitting probe. So, let's take another emitting probe and let's take a 4 MHz 10 mm which have a cine beam. As you may realize, now the Doppler frequencies are also well measured and we have a little bit improvement in the velocity profile. But the best will be to take the EDL probe. The EDL probe have the same emitting frequency as the receiving probe and a beam width which is almost zero. When taking the EDL probe, it is always good to increase the number of simulated particles. So, let's do it. Now, you will realize that the Doppler frequency are well measured and the velocity profile are also correctly measured. Thank you for watching this video.